Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we ourselves forgive anyone in debt to us and do not subject us to the final test. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, some of you might say, well, Father, I saw, thought you said we were talking about the Our Father. Remember, the Our Father appears in two places in the Bible, and Matthew is the traditional one that we say, the Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is word for word from Matthew. What we read here is kind of an abbreviated version, and it is from Luke, but it contains exactly the same elements just phrased a little more succinctly. Now, at the most critical hour in Jesus's ministry, he prayed. And this is what I think a few of us reflect on because we sometimes don't have time to pray. Sometimes we're too tired to pray. Sometimes we just choose to do other things other than pray. But if Jesus prayed, what? does that say about us and our need to pray? If Jesus himself felt the need in his humanity, all right? Now, the Our Father is a summary. Now we're gonna take you back to seminary because in seminary, we studied this. And what I didn't know going into seminary, but it makes perfect sense, is that the Our Father is a summary of the entire gospel. The entire Bible is summarized in the Our Father. And we become so repetitive at it that, you know, sometimes I've been so exhausted in the chapel trying to do a holy hour at midnight or one in the morning, I would finish and not even remember if I just prayed in Our Father or Hail Mary. It's just, we become so repetitive. And that's where our Lord is telling us, you know, St. Augustine said, Go through all the prayers of Scripture, and you will see all is contained in the Our Father. Wow. Now, why is that? Well, first of all, when you pray the Our Father, when you pray to the Father, you're in communion with Jesus. What is the entire basis of Jesus' prayer in the Bible? Prayer to the Father. What is the entire basis of the prayer of the Mass? People always say, to Jesus. No, the Mass is the prayer and the sacrifice of Jesus offered to the Father. That's what the Our Father prayer is. It's basically the Mass outside a Mass. Because it's a prayer of Jesus being offered to the Father. What happens here on the altar? The priest is in persona Christi, in the person of Jesus, making the prayer of Jesus and the sacrifice of Jesus to the Father. That's what the connection is. So when we pray the Our Father, we're in communion with the Son. And that's exactly where we want to be. So the Our Father is not a child's prayer. A lot of people know, well, I learned it as a child. I used to say it as a child, our Father, Hail Mary, Glory Be. Those are the three of the most powerful prayers, vocal prayers you could say. The Lord's Prayer is specifically not a child's prayer. It should be for children, but not just a child's prayer. You know, the technical term of the, our Father is the Lord's Prayer because Jesus prayed it. But you know what also it's called? The Disciples' Prayer. And I think this is accurate because we must know what we are saying as those who are in need. We cannot know what we are praying until we become a disciple. And that's why it's called the disciples' prayer. You know, I've only talked about this, I think, once before. 
But it's so noteworthy that when you look at the order of the petitions in the Our Father, it's just like the Ten Commandments. You address God first, and then us and our relation with each other. What are the commandments? The first commandments are all about God, then our relationship with each other. So the first three commandments, there's no other God but our God, not using the Lord's name in vain, keeping holy the Lord's day. Those does have to do with God. Then the rest are our relationship with each other, not committing adultery, not killing, not coveting. The Our Father is the same way. The first three petitions have to do with God and giving God glory. Just like the Ten Commandments. So it's our Father, basic, you're, who you're addressing it to, who art in heaven. So who am I addressing the prayer to? Our Father who art, art in heaven. Now we get into the first three petitions. Hallowed be thy name. That matches the second commandment. You don't use the Lord's name in vain. In fact, the Lord's name is so sacred, the Jews didn't even say it. That hits it right up front. And when people confess to me in the confessional that they've sworn, I just kind of, yes, Father, and I swear, and then I go on to the next one. I always ask them, is it the Lord's name in vain? Because sometimes it can become a bad habit. And so this is very important. Hallowed be thy name. That matches the commandment. Do not use the Lord's name in vain. Then we go on. Thy kingdom come. So now we are asking in preparation for the coming of Jesus in our hearts. That's the first commandment. That only God is to be enthroned in our hearts. Not sex, not money, not power. Especially not ourselves. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that, if you want to know all the commandments, remember what Jesus said, where the, what the, the man asked him, what are the greatest commandments? And Jesus said, you know them, don't commit adultery, honor your mother and father. And he said, you know those, right? And he says, yes. He said, but I tell you, the two greatest commandments, love God and love your neighbor. But you know one thing that my Monsignor Toro taught us in seminary? Actually, those two can be wrapped up into one. Even though we talk about doing the will of, or, or uh, uh, loving God and loving our neighbors, the two great commandments, he said you can actually roll those up into one. Do the will of God. When you do the will of God, you are loving God. You are loving your neighbor. You are not committing adultery. You are honoring your father and mother. You are not using the Lord's name in vain. You are not covering your neighbor's wife. You are not covering your neighbor's goods. You are not bearing false witness. You're doing it all. So the Our Father says that. Thy will be done, not my will be done. That's actually the greatest of all the commandments. That is the two great commandments wrapped up into one. And that's why Jesus throughout says, do the will of the Father. Whoever is my brother and my sister, those are who do the will of my father. Amazing how this prayer connects. Now, the second three petitions, like the Ten Commandments, addresses us and our relations with others and our needs. So the second three petitions have to do with our needs and our necessities in living in this world. Give us this day our daily bread. What is that? Now we're into the sacraments. The church connects scripture with the Ten Commandments, with the Our Father prayer, with the Holy Scripture. So the second three petitions are about our lives. Give us this day our daily bread. Give me the Eucharist. That's the living bread, John 6. Then it says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgiveness is key. Forgiveness is key. What does scripture say? Why is this a whole compendium of the Bible? Because does the Bible not say that God, your heavenly Father, will forgive you as you forgive others? The measure by which you measure will be measured out to others. If you do not forgive, my heavenly Father in heaven cannot forgive. It says it very clear in Scripture. We can only be forgiven by the way we forgive others. 
forgive and we will be forgiven. That's right in scripture. Forgive and you will be forgiven. So forgive us this day, or forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And then the third one, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. This is the whole key, is helping us through the gift of our guardian angels, the saints, the gift of the church, staying in a state of grace, avoiding those near occasions of sin. It's right in the act of contrition that we pray in the confessional. Basically, lead us not in temptation. Help us avoid that near occasion of sin. Our whole faith is wrapped up in this prayer. And I like the fact that it's only when God is given his proper place first in the first three petitions that all other things fall into proper place. All right? Prayer must never be an attempt to bend the will of God to our will. Lord, I need this. Lord, provide this. Lord, let me get that new job. Lord, let me get that new house. Let my offer go through on, uh, on this or that. Th those are good. But you always need to finish it by saying, if it be your will. Even Jesus said, let the cup pass me by. Lord, take away this suffering. But what did Jesus say after it? But your will be done, not mine. And so prayer shouldn't try to bend the will of God to our desires. What it ought to do is be an attempt to submit our will to the will of God's. Now we're back to that first commandment. It's like a big circle. It's the one great commandment. And so anyway, the second part then, after God's, We've recognized God, acknowledged God, praised God. Then we get back into that second part I was talking about, which deals with our needs and our necessities. It deals with the three essential things or needs of man and in the three spheres of time. This is what I find most amazing about the Our Father prayer. Listen to this. First, it asks for bread, the Eucharist for that which is necessary to maintain life. Therefore, the needs of the present moment are brought before the throne of God. Give us this day our daily bread. Today, give me what I need, Father. So the present is brought before the throne of God. Give me, please, Lord, I'm praying you. Give me what I need today. Give me my daily bread. Give me the grace and sustenance to get through another day. So the present is brought before the throne of God. Second, it asks for forgiveness. So the past is brought before the throne of God. Forgive us this day our, excuse me, forgive us our trespasses. In other words, forgive me for what I've done in the past, what I've already messed up. So the past is brought to the throne of God. But forgive me what I have done, what I've done in the past. So it brings the past to the throne of God. And then it brings the future to the throne of God. Please help me in these future moments of temptation. It asks for help in temptation. Lead us not into temptation. So the future is brought before the throne of God. And thereby commits everything into the hands of God, past, present, and future. Amazing how this one little prayer does all this. And we just rattle through it. Our Father, our heaven, how be in thy name, thy kingdom come. We have to think what it means. You know, I haven't done this recently, but I used to really commonly give as penances in the confessional. You know, you, you, you go into confession sometimes, I'll just say, to our fathers, to Hail Marys, now make your act of contrition. Whoa, slow down a minute. Think about when you have just happened in that confessional, you have just been forgiven and, and the priest says, pray in our Father. Oh, we're just going through the motions. Non-Catholics hear this and think, oh, geez, what a joke. You can go murder somebody and say in our Father and just go murder somebody again and say in our Father. That's a misunderstanding. 
Because when you go into that confessional, you are truly laying your soul at the throne of God and say, forgive me. Now we're talking about what I've done in the past. I am so sorry, Lord, I've messed up. And what the priest should say, and I used to say, and I need to, this is a good wake up for me to do it again. I used to give the penance of an Our Father, but instead of just saying, you know, just pray one Our Father, what I used to say, and I need to do it again, is say, I want you to pray the Our Father, but I want you to pray it very slowly and meditate on every word. Think about every word that is being spoken in that prayer. And think about what we just said, that every line has a meaning, deeply, deep meaning. And so everything here is God telling us what the importance of this prayer is. So anyway, Jesus tells us that God, the Father, knows what we need before we ask him. He says that in scripture. The Father knows what you need before you even ask him. But why pray then? Because by asking, we become aware that we have needs that only God can provide. We realize we are not God. If now you're praying for relief from cancer, you're realizing you don't have the power to control it. Only God does. If you're praying for a relationship to be mended, you then should say, realize, geez, I've tried everything. I can't fix this relationship. It's, it's beyond repair. Only God can fix it. If you're praying for healing, only God can. It helps us realize we are not God, and that's the first commandment. This prayer helps us realize the very first commandment. So by asking, we become more aware that we have needs that only God the Father can grant us. So the Lord's prayer is so powerful. And notice that it does not teach you to pray, my Father, my Father who art in heaven. It's our Father. It's very significant because the words I, me, mine never occur. It's we, it's our, it's us. Forgive us this day our daily bread. Our Father, lead us not into temptation. That means God is not our exclusive possession. We are brothers. If we share the same Father, we are all brothers and sisters. And that's what the body of Christ is. God is not any man's exclusive possession. The very phrase, our Father, eliminates ourself. It means we're in a bigger picture here. This is all in the Our Father. The fatherhood of God is the only possible basis for the brotherhood of man. What's missing in this world today? The brotherhood of man. Even atheists tell you that. Even people who don't believe a word in God will tell you what's missing from this world is brotherhood, love for one another. Even ones that don't even believe in God will tell you that we're missing brotherhood. But the brotherhood is non-existent if you don't have the common father. Because if you are truly brothers, what is a brother? You have a common father. That's why the prayer begins, our father. And this is what the prodigal father is about, a loving God who gives, a loving God who will always take us back, a loving God that always will reconcile. And so let us see in this powerful prayer, as St. Augustine said, the whole scripture is wrapped up. Let us pray that, our Father, and think about the words, not just rattle them. You know, um, to end here, I, I wanted to say on Saturday, I'm going to be doing a talk. It's open to the public to come Saturday morning at 11. I'll be talking about, and tomorrow is actually Our Lady of the Rosary, October the 7th. So I'm going to be doing a little talk on Our Lady of the Rosary. And on Saturday, I'm going to be doing St. Therese of Lisieux and um, also mentioning Our Lady of the Rosary. And I'm going to talk a little bit about Our Lady of the Rosary because we celebrate it tomorrow. So I'm going to mention it on Saturday. But that's the perfect example of not just rattling off a bunch of Hail Marys. It's the same way. So we're going to dissect the Hail Mary on Saturday the same way we just did the Our Father today. So please join us because these prayers are not given by God to just ramble. They're not vain. They are to be done in reverence. And so when we do that, 
we see that our God is so good that he's giving us the very words to invoke his grace. And that's the beauty of our faith, that we have trust that those prayers mean something. When we rattle them off and we have no trust, even Jesus, it said in scripture, can't work miracles when there's no faith. So if we're rattling it off without faith, even God can't work a miracle. He said right in scripture, Jesus couldn't because if people had no faith. Let us now say these prayers with faith. Let us stand now and offer our petitions to our Heavenly Father who is rich in